Hello guys, welcome back. Today we are going to study about JavaScript's three dots, that is the spread and rest operators. JavaScript's ES6 came out with some cool new features. Dot 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 is one of these new JavaScript functionalities. It can be used in two different ways, as a spread operator or as a rest parameter. First of all, we'll have a look at REST parameters and their use cases. Next, we'll look at the spread operators and their use cases. And we'll also take a look at what used to be used before the REST and spread operators. So, what is REST parameters? REST parameters collect all the remaining elements into an array. This allows us to do really neat function definitions. Let's see how we put them to use. In this code, we have a function add which takes two parameters x and y and returns their sum as you can see here. Usually you call this function with two parameters that is to add them. But here we are doing something different. See, we are calling the add function with five different parameters. This is perfectly valid in JavaScript as the JavaScript rule says that you can call a function with any number of parameters. So what is happening here is the function accepts the first two parameters that is 1 and 2 and returns the sum that is 3. So what happens to the other three parameters? Well we threw them but the function wasn't able to catch them. You can understand it that way. So now say that if we wanted to have a function such that it would accept the first two parameters and any number of parameters more than that which are passed to it should be stored in an array. So with traditional JavaScript, there was no solution to this as we would never know how many parameters we have. The rest parameters provides a solution for this. We can rewrite the previous add function like this. We have the same function add but this time only with one argument arg s and before arg s we have applied the rest parameter that is the three dots. Now before moving on to the rest of the function code let's see what is getting stored in this argus. Here when we call the add with only one parameter that is 1, 1 goes and gets stored into arc s but not as a value but as an array. So what is happening here is that arc s is an array whose elements are the parameters passed to it during the function call. So during the first function call, 1 is stored at index 0 or of the arg s array. In the second function call, 1 and 2 are passed. So 1 is stored at index 0 and 2 is stored at index 1 of arg s array. Now in the third function call, we are passing 5 parameters. So all of those 5 will be stored as array elements of arg s. So basically what the rest parameter is doing here is, it is packing off a number of elements into an array. Then inside the function we just loop through all the elements one by one and store their sum into result and finally return the result. There are a few pitfalls with the rest parameter. So you should always keep in mind that the rest parameters have to be at the last argument. This is because all the remaining elements are stored in an array. So having a function definition like this does not make sense. And it gives errors. See here, we have used the rest parameter in the second argument. So when we pass the first argument, it will be stored inside A. Then all of the other elements will be stored inside of B nothing will ever be stored inside of C. 
So what you could do is this. See here we have a function x, y, z which have three arguments and the rest parameter is used with the last argument z. So when we call this function here the first argument a gets stored inside of x the second gets stored inside of y which is hello and the rest of the four parameters which are what's up, good morning, hi, howdy are packed into an array and assigned to z. Then inside of the function we first console.log x and y which spits out hey, hello. Then we console log z which gives us an entire array of four elements as expected. z of 0 gives us the first element that is what's up and z dot len gives us 4 because 4 elements are stored inside of an array in z. The benefits of rest parameters are first of all it gives us a very easy way of packing a number of any number of elements into an array. Also it's not giving us an array like object it is giving us an array on which we can use array like methods all the array methods such as array.find, array.length, .map, .filter etc. Now let's see what was used before the rest parameter. In JavaScript we also have the arguments keyword. So before rest parameters existed to get all the arguments in a function we used arguments which is an array like object. Okay, if that was a tangent, don't worry, it will be clear in a bit. Alright, see, here we have a function called some function, which is returning arguments. Here, arguments is a keyword. The arguments keyword here is an array-like object. And what an array-like object means is that whatever is passed into it, it will be stored as key value pairs of indexes or indices and values. So here we are passing three parameters. First is a string, joy care. Second is a number, 100. And third is a boolean, false. So as you can see down here, arguments, inside of arguments, at index 0, key will have value of a string joy care index 1 key will have a value 100 and finally index 2 key will have a value false now this is not an array this is an object whose keys are the indices of an array so before rest parameters we did have a method of Accumulating a number of parameters passed to a function inside of an array-like object, but there were a number of pitfalls. First of all, it didn't return an array. It returned an array-like object. This meant that we cannot use array methods such as array.filter, array.map, .size, .length, etc. Another pitfall is that we also cannot use arguments in arrow functions. And this is because our arrow functions do not have their own this object. Okay, kudos. So now you know how to use rest parameters in JavaScript. Next up, we'll be diving in to see the spread operators. Spread it mama. Okay. Once you get what rest parameters is, you will easily understand what the spread operator means. Spread operator is the exact reverse of the rest parameter. The rest parameter packs a number of parameters into an array, whereas the spread operator unpacks an array into a number of individual entities. So we'll be directly looking at the use cases of the spread operators. The first one is adding array elements to an existing array. So here we have an array 
A R R, which have three elements: joy, vengari, and varugu. Then we have a second array which have one element, and the second element we are actually copying another array inside of this array after its existing elements. So when you place three dots in front of an array inside of square brackets, then what it does it it takes out the content of the array one by one and stores it inside another array as individual elements. So the final contents of the new array are joy care, joy, vengari, and varugu. Now, unlike the rest parameters. you can use the spread operator as the first or as any argument as for example see here we have a my names array which already has some content and we want to store the contents of another array in this array in addition to its own content but this time we want to add the contents of the existing array before the contents of this array so all we do is at the zeroth index we use the spread operator with the previous array and hence we'll have all the content of the previous array before the existing content of the current array and not only the first but you can do this at any position of the array the second use case is just copying array in the previous use case we were uh adding the content of an array inside of another array in addition to the existing content of the new array but here we are just copying one array to another and that is you do by using spread operator with the previous array a more clearer use case is passing the contents of an array to a function as individual arguments before the existence of the spread operator in order to do so we would have to loop through each of the value of an array and pass those first of all store those values and then pass on all those values to the function but the spread operator makes a life easy see here we want three arguments in the function and we want that all the arguments should come from an array so had we just passed a simple array then we wouldn't have gotten three arguments we would have just got an array inside of this a and without using spread we need to loop through all the values of our guess and pass all of those values after storing those in other values but with spread operator we can do this with just a single line that is by calling the function with the spread operator the contents of our guess are 1 2 and 3 as an array so here what the spread operator does it it removes 1 it removes 2 it removes 3 separates them then it gives 1 to a 2 to b and 3 to c and inside of the function we are just returning the sum of all of the three values also the spread and rest parameters would have been a limited addition would have been a very limited functionality if they were only for arrays but that's not the case we can use the spread and rest operators with any iterable object say for example we have a string if we had a string str and then we did just dot 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 str inside of square brackets then what it would do is it would separate each characters inside of str because each character of this string is iterable and finally give us an array which contains all the characters of the string as individual entities not only with string spread and rest can be used with any iterable object now from here only sky is the limit so that's all for today and in the description there is the link to the slides where you can download this and also there are other few helpful links which might come in handy to you and i'll see you next time bye